Hi, this is Foner in a video review of the Samsung Galaxy S, a high-end Android smartphone from the manufacturer on account of the Super AMOLED screen, a huge 4-inch screen and the 1 GHz Hummingbird processor. It also comes with 8 or 16 GB of internal memory of which 2 GB are reserved for installing applications from Android market. The main added value here is the 4-inch Super AMOLED screen, of course, because of its vibrant saturated colors it's able to show up to 60 million colors the viewing angle on it is from 0 to 180 degrees uh, almost one and the same as you can see here um, the contrast is high the black color is really black not washed out gray as uh, most other screens on uh, high smartphones but the only drawback it has is um, the resolution kind of shows when you're trying to read small text you can see every single pixel but the colors are so vivid that it kind of overshadows uh, the small gripe. The rest of the design is nothing really spectacular. Rectangular shape, volume rocker on the left, power lock key on the right, the audio jack and the micro USB port on the top. The only thing on the back is the camera, which unfortunately has no flash. That's how Samsung decided to go with uh, this particular model. But it's coming to 110 countries simultaneously, including the four big US carriers. And um, some of those units have flash. The phone is uh, fairly big but comfortable to hold because um, it is actually very thin. And um, the all around build is plastic, unfortunately. We think this high end smartphone from Samsung deserves something better than. Um, this plastic look and it's still a little bit squeaking uh, but that's how they decided to go with it now let's have a look at uh, Samsung's own TouchWiz 3.0 user interface that's overlaying the stock uh, 2.1 Android here and the phone is supposed to get an upgrade to Android 2.2 uh, later on in the year Galaxy S runs the newest version of the TouchWiz 3.0 user interface from Samsung which doesn't really bring any new functionality to Android, it just uh, changes the way it looks. It's characterized by a bunch of home screens, seven in the case of Samsung Galaxy S, and this dock here in the bottom of the screen which is present throughout the home screens as well as in the applications menu. And you can choose the icons that appear on the dock, except for the far right one which always stays applications or menu depending where you're at. Navigation is also done by the touch keys underneath the screen, back, context menu and the physical home key in the middle which takes you to the first home screen. Currently they are empty but widgets is the name of the game. You can populate the screens with widgets the way it's usually done in Android but Samsung have provided their own widgets here. Let's add the daily briefing one, weather, stock quotes, news, and you can follow your own schedule if you have some event listed here. Pretty helpful. Long tap, bring it to the trash bin in the bottom and you can dispose of it. Let's see how the applications menu looks like. It's also different from stock Android with its scrollable list of application icons. You have to go left and right, nice flashy icons, colorful pages, we really like it and pages get extended the more applications you, you add of course. Um, the other parts of the user interface are also different looking than stock Android calendar for example, that's how it looks like. You have a monthly view by default, week the day and you have a list of your few past events and a few future events at one page. Let's create an event, enter title, date, time and you can actually ask the handset to save it in its own memory on the calendar in the phone or on Google Calendar if you have added more options like the option to save it in Facebook Calendar or your corporate Outlook account. It will offer these options as well. Location, alarm reminder and all the events from the different calendars get combined in one single view here with different colors. 
which is really helpful. This is part of Samsung Social Hub feature, which uh, basically aggregates a lot of events and messages and notifications from your different sources like your social network and your different email accounts for example if you set up a few email accounts here they will show in a combined inbox with different colors a pretty neat and helpful feature as well let's see if it's the same with the messaging application it is pretty simple in terms of interface that's how the keyboard looks like the portrait keyboard is actually pretty easy to type with because the screen is 4 inch so you don't really have to turn it into landscape mode if you need to jot something down quickly but let's turn it to landscape and see how it looks like it turns quickly see how big the keys are on the 4 inch screen so you don't need much else in terms of physical keyboard for example here we go if you swipe you change the key set pretty neat feature and the Galaxy S also has other input options present on it by default now what we really want to show you is the colors on the Super AMOLED screen so it's best to enter the gallery that's how it looks like on the Samsung Galaxy S some 3D effects to it you can also show pictures in batches by date and time uh, here's just a scrollable list let's find a set of nice pictures to show on the screen here's a collection of wallpapers you see how quick kinetic scrolling is in the gallery absolutely no lag here's this water drop here the multi-touch works very well, very smooth, zooming, precise and you can do some light editing in the gallery itself, crop, rotate or you can share the picture, you can shoot it in an email or you can upload it to Picasa if you have set up an account it actually pulls all your Picasa pictures as well as thumbnails in the gallery and it marks the pictures with different signs according to their source Picasso, the phone or download it from somewhere that's the gallery it's not only the great hardware Samsung has given to the device they have also pre-installed some useful applications from the very beginning for example you have um, Microsoft Office Documents Editor called Think Free Office which you have to activate but it's completely free and it also has a file browser in it although Samsung has its own file browser called My Files pre-installed on the device as well you can view and edit Word, Excel and PowerPoint documents in Think Free Office and you can only view PDF documents but it's very clear where Samsung is heading with pre-installing additional applications, helpful applications which you otherwise have to pay for. They want to make this phone very very popular. Another place where pinch to zoom works really well, multi-touch works well, is the browser. Let's show you the browser because you'll be spending a lot of time with it. Let's choose a new window, a nice loading line here in green on the top, minimalistic interface that's our home site loading it's pretty heavy with a lot of pictures but it loaded quickly and although it's not loaded completely see how the kinetic scrolling works very smooth very snappy and the only drawback of this screen is when the text is too small it gets a bit pixelated you can also see almost the individual pixels uh, count on the screen but when you pinch to zoom everything is much more readable and the colors are so bright so saturated that even the most boring pages can look interesting see how smooth the scrolling is left and right or up and down 
The browser also has a bunch of options for window management, downloads, bookmarks, etc. And when this thing gets upgraded to Android 2.2 Froyo, it will also bring Adobe Flash to the browser, which will make things much better. In the end, we can definitely conclude that this is one of the coolest handsets out there because of the 4-inch Super AMOLED screen. And it's very fast, it's pretty responsive, um, it has a very good battery life. The drawbacks like the lack of flash and a uh, little bit of plastic all around build uh, are definitely overshadowed by the gorgeous screen. And Samsung should keep working on the Super AMOLED technology, improving it. It's currently one of the most promising, if not the most promising uh, screen technologies for smartphones out there. And when this thing gets upgraded to Android 2.2 Froyo, things should get even better because it will bring Adobe Flash to the handset. This was Phone Arena's video review of the Samsung Galaxy S. For more in-depth reviews of this and other handsets, you can visit our site, phonearena.com.